All right, everyone. Um, we're going to start the last session before lightning talks. Uh, so this will be a pretty quick se session, just talking about an overview of the testing in, in Juju and Charms uh, tools in the ecosystem. Uh, we'll be splitting this up half. This is be just a general tools overview, um, things just to familiarize yourself with. And then tomorrow we can go much more deeper into this stuff. Uh, and then also uh, Ryan is going to go and talk a bit about how our OpenStack testing stuff, our OpenStack testing CI works and kind of discuss more how awesome that is as a story in general. Uh, so I'm just going to take a few more minutes of your time. I'm sure you all are tired of hearing me talk. Um, this is just testing for success, an overview of our tools. Um, the first tool I want to talk about is a tool called Amulet. Uh, so Amulet is, um, in testing, in the initial overview that I mentioned to you guys earlier, we, we talked about several different levels of testing. Unit testing, your code and your charm. Uh, integration and functional testing as another form of testing. Amulet was written as a language agnostic framework that you can do use to describe scenarios that your charm is deployed in and then write assertions against that deployment. Um, so what you get is you get a basically a programmable way to define a bundle. Um, you then initiate that bundle against an environment. And then you then tell Juju to let me know when it's ready and when it's idle, you can then write and run assertions to validate, does this respond the way I expect it to? Is this service operating? Is the file created the way I anticipated based on the configuration I've supplied? Uh, so any, any of those facets of the previous orchestration, relations are created and the data is being exchanged as you expect, files and directories exist, configuration is being written. Um, so this is an example of an amulet file, at least the top half of an amulet file. Uh, it's written in Python, it's a Python, uh, just a Python module. So I import Amulet, I create a new deployment, I add MySQL and WordPress to that deployment, I relate MySQL and WordPress together, and I expose WordPress, and then I, that setup I've described, which in and of itself is a bundle, uh, I tell Amulet to deploy that environment, to advance my environment, and then I tell it to wait until everything has gone idle in the environment. Uh, once I do that, I can start creating assertions. Things like uh, getting the information for your one unit of WordPress and one unit of MySQL, using Python libraries to gather and make sure that the home page for WordPress responds so it's been installed properly. Um, and then you could also do things like get the file contents for a directory or get the relation data that was submitted. Um, so this is a, a file, a test that lives inside of the WordPress charm in the test directory. It's one of the many that exist there currently. MySQL has its own set of tests that are also written, things to make sure that MySQL deploys and responds properly, and then also several integration tests to make sure that MySQL and Keystone and other components of the OpenStack charms work as well. So these are tests that are written and embedded in charms that we exercise regularly whenever we're validating that a charm update actually is functioning as expected. Um, these tests are written outside of whatever language the hooks are. This is more of an integration or a functional test that's executed uh, for charms. So that is Amulet, in and of itself is a framework. It's one that you can use or one you can opt not to use. There are other frameworks that exist. Most of them are based on or around Amulet and extend them. Uh, you can also just write bash scripts that basically call out and shell out to Juju. Juju deploy, add relation, configure, some way to validate that Juju is idle. And then you can run SSHs against it. You can do any assertions. Amulet just aims to simplify that process. Uh, so Amulet's a framework for writing tests. The next thing we have is Bundle Tester. Uh, bundle tester is what we use to test and execute those tests inside of a charm, whether written in Amulet or otherwise. Um, as the name lends to, bundle tester was originally designed to test bundles, and the idea is that charms are just a component of a larger workflow. It's kind of hard to in, in distill all the different permutations that a user may deploy your charm as a single test in, inside of that charm. So as we've seen now, the MySQL charm has 12 tests. Uh, one of them tests that deploys regularly, the other one validates all the different permutations inside the OpenStack charms, because the OpenStack team needs to make sure that works with their deployments. But really what we need to do is we need to make sure we write a test that describes what, that MySQL is working properly and then bundles leverage that. So that was the idea behind Bundle Tester originally. We're still trending there, but we're not quite there yet. But Bundle Tester does more than just test bundles. Uh, bundle Tester is our, our execution runner. When you run Bundle Tester, whether against the bundle, which is that YAML file I showed you guys earlier, or whether it is against the charm, Bundle Tester will take the cheapest operation to continue testing until it completes testing or finds an error. 
So the first thing it'll do is it'll run a lint against the charm to make sure the charm is up to our store policy based on simple linting rules. Uh, then it'll execute any unit tests it can possibly find in the charm before finally standing up an environment and doing a deployment against that, that, that environment. So if your unit test fails, if your lints fail, you'll get a faster turnaround time than having to wait for an entire stand up and tear down of that charm. Uh, bundle tester is also what we use as our test runner in our CI environment. So if you're looking to mimic what we're doing in CI, Bundle Tester is the tool we use to execute tests for the charm. Um, this segues nicely into our final tool I want to mention, which is Charmbox. Uh, Charmbox is a Docker box, Docker container built on top of JujuBox, which is just a Juju Docker container. It has Juju installed, the latest version, and you can spin up that box, get Juju in a pristine environment, tear it down, update it, and get the latest version of Juju. Uh, Charmbox installs all of these tools as dependencies and allows you to do testing in isolation. Uh, so a lot of these tests require additional dependencies to be installed, so instead of having them muddy your system by installing dependencies, uh, this will allow you to run them in a very clean environment. This is actually the component we truly use in CI, which is Charmbox, which leverages our bundle tester, which then exercises the tests for the charm. Um, and in and of itself is just a Docker container. Um, the final portion, how this all ties together, is our charm testing CI. Um, this is something that the developer experience team has been working on and off for quite a while on and improving as an experience overall. Um, any of the people who've tried to submit a charm to the charm store have seen our review queue. Uh, the idea behind the CI is that we constantly test charms that exist in our ecosystem. As soon as they're updated, we test them, make sure they're working properly, and elevate status when they're not. Uh, whenever users uh, propose, developers propose changes, we want to test those changes before we let it land in the store. Uh, so our charm testing CI currently runs against AWS, HP Cloud, Joint, Azure, and local providers. Right? That's them right there. Those are the clouds that we exercise tests against currently today. Um, that's not the complete list of tests yet, uh, but that is what we have at today running, where charms in the store will be tested, changes being submitted to the store will be tested, we have a pretty good idea of the quality of charms. And those tests are all the unit tests and functional tests that you all are writing inside of charms and charm authors. Uh, I'll also take a brief moment to talk about the future of the charm testing CI. Um, what we're actively working on is taking charm testing to the next level and increasing its visibility as far as what it's testing. Uh, so a lot of people have enterprise deployments and limited network ability. So one thing we want to test for is do charms actually work in a very limited network sense? Does it only hit the archive? Does it try external resources? Uh, if we can catch this stuff earlier on, we can help make those course corrections during charm development rather than having it be post-production when someone's trying to deploy that service. <laughs> we're also going to expand our architecture testing. We currently only do x86. We're adding Power8 and PPC64 LE in the next coming weeks. And then shortly after, we'll be finding ways that we can exercise ARM as well. So we can test and, and sniff out any charms that may have architecture dependency problems uh, and have those highlighted and resolved. We're also working on adding MAS and any other new public cloud providers Juju signs on so we can continue to exercise the full ecosystem of providers that Juju adds, that Juju allows you to connect to. And then finally, continuing our story of a more robust testing, um, making sure that our infrastructure responds properly, and then as we find any issues within Juju, we're making sure those are elevated appropriately to the development teams so they can correct them before they hit any customers. That includes doing things like, instead of testing on the current stable releases, testing on nightly builds and betas and alphas of Juju, uh, a subset of our charms that we know working, so we can sniff out those problems sooner on. Um, that's all I have for the testing tools. I know that's a very high level. We could talk a lot more about how to write tests and stuff, but I think that would be more appropriate for tomorrow's two-hour block where we kind of talk one-on-one, -on -one, assess needs, work through examples. Um, before I pass over to Ryan, I want to see if anyone had any questions about the tools we have, the processes, uh, anything we've covered so far at all. Yes? So in order to get a charm into the charm store, is it necessary to have tests on the charm, or can I skip the tests? Uh, that's a great question. So we do require some semblance of testing. We recommend you at least write functional tests. Uh, we encourage you write unit tests. Um, but going forward, our policy has been that you must have tests in order to get into the store. Um, we never we had this policy is someone we've had for a while, but we didn't originally start with it. Um, so we had a lot of charms in our previous long-term support release, and we decided let's move all of those charms forward. Um, when we started doing sampling of charms, we realized that Apache has changed between the precise version and the trusty version. 
it went from requiring no longer not requiring any extension on a configuration file to requiring one. A lot of charms didn't write this configuration file and broke Apache. Um, so if we had testing required at that beginning stages, we would have sniffed this out much sooner than what we have now. So that became one of the policies we enacted is that in the charm store, if you want to be in the propagated namespace and the recommended namespace, you should definitely have tests. Um, that way we show your commitment to making sure that you want a quality charm in the store and we can continue to exercise and validate that quality for you. Uh, great question though. Um, any other questions?